So in this video, I'll continue the discussion on uh, ins uh, transform insulation power factor. So as I stated in the previous video, so the transformer insulation can be modeled as a capacitor in parallel or in series. The parallel combination is typically uh, used in parallel with uh, a resistor. So then when you apply uh, current AC voltage so some total current will flow, some of it, if there is leakage, in other words, contamination like I talked about, moisture, any other things that makes the insulation not perfect, uh, then you're going to have some uh, resistive current flowing. And that's what's going to cause the losses. Then you're going to have capacitive current, which is what it should be if uh, some, there will be capacitive current. So then the, this resistor here, which is not a typical resistance, you know, like a, what you see in a conductor, this is just a representation of the leakage current that because the insulation is not perfect. So then it's going to cause some losses. And we know power factor equation, it's watts divided by voltage times amps like whatever voltage you apply, whatever current is, is circulated. So for insulation, we want this to be zero, but we know uh, it's not going to be zero. So it's going to be some value other than zero. But it's, we want it to be as small as possible because then we know there is no, there are no problems with uh, insulation. And we'll talk about, and I'll talk about in this series of videos, I'll talk about uh, you know, power factor, uh, like the different tests that can be performed, you know, when you have high voltage, low voltage, uh, tertiary winding, and different, there are different setups, you know. So inside a transformer, so you have, for instance, this might be, so this is a tank basically. So this is the tank, and this is kind of like top view or just kind of give an idea. So the, these are bushings. And these are the terminals. And th this is the low voltage side. So the same thing, we have the bushings. So in this case, I'm showing the windings. So you have three windings. So winding one, two, three, that connected in a delta. Just as an example, it can be any connection. This is a low voltage connected as Y. So here's winding one, two, three, and brought to bushings, terminals. And this is the, so this might be, you know, so H1, H2 bushing, H3. This would be X1, X2, X3. Then the tank is connected to ground because there. So transformer core is grounded. So I have a picture here that I took from from this site here. So you have the here's the core, core limb one, core limb two, and here's the third. This is a three limb core. Then you have the yokes. So this is the top yoke. This is the bottom yoke. And the yokes basically connect the, lim the limbs because they have to, the core has to be a complete circle, uh, circuit. Then you have these frames here or core clamps to uh, keep the core together because it's, it's laminated. This is just one, you know, there are different technologies. <clears throat> then what you would do, like you would, what they would do, they would stick uh, a strap inside between the laminations. So it's from aluminum, for instance, aluminum uh, strap. Then they would bring that to, so for large transformers, typically they bring that to a bushing. So core, ground, uh, core bushing, then they will ground that bushing externally. That's the best uh, uh, practice. For smaller transformers like pad mount, pole mount, what you see in distribution uh, systems, 
Uh, typically, it might be grounded internally, but then if you want to test the core ground insulation, as I'll talk about that later, uh, or even power factories can be, uh, there are certain tests you cannot do unless you remove that. So, and this just shows kind of the windings. Uh, this is a core form, so the windings are uh, concentric, then that wound around the core. So the core would be grounded basically. So transformer core is grounded, the tank is grounded, then transformer insulation is made up of, you know, you have oil if it's filled. So I'm only talking about oil filled here for simplicity. You have paper inside, you have press board, you have tape, wood, enamel on the conductor. So there, there's, there are so many types of insulation. And, uh, and all that, you know, kind of is, is required for insulation purposes, you know. So during insulation power factor test, all bushing, so what you do, you kind of, you connect the terminals together. So you put a, a wire or a conductor, basically. Then you do the same thing for, for the low voltage. And if you have the XO, but, so typically the neutral bushing will be grounded. So you have to remove that, that ground. So it's, so XO is isolated from the ground. Terminals are shorted together, then energize bushing, winding lead. So basically what you do, uh, so you can energize because you can measure from high, uh, you know, then you measure from low. And again, I'll talk about different tests later, but this is just kind of explain the test setup. So then what you do, you apply AC voltage. So for instance, you apply the hot lead to the bushings here. Then what you do, uh, you can ground the low voltage if uh, either grounded or ungrounded. And I'll, again, there is like an ungrounded uh, specimen test that is grounded. So there are different, uh, because if you, wanna, if you don't wanna include the ground in the measurement, I'll talk about that later. So you energize the bushing. So the bushings are energized, the winding leads, and also the windings are all shorted because we don't wanna, we wanna minimize any inductance uh, impact. Because, so what you see here, so I, so, and this is uh, to ground from, from the bush, from the windings of ground in this case. But as you can see, the one, you know, from, from the bushings, leads, windings, they are not connected to ground so that it's an open circuit basically. So, <clears throat> so that, that power factor should be very small, you know, theoretically speaking, if everything is good, you know, and, uh, so if there's no moisture, no contamination, you know, uh, all the things I talked about. So all the insulation, or I guess, sorry, uh, the, you know, like if you take the windings, then the bushings, the lead, bushing leads, conductors, uh, you know, the tank core, core frames, then the insulation, you know, oil, paper, press board, porcelain, or polymer. You know, it depends on what kind of bushing you have, etc. All that makes up the the capacitor. Again, if you go back to the model, because when you apply voltage, it's an AC voltage, and that voltage will depend on the withstand of the system you are testing. You know. For large transformers, typically 10 kilovolt or kV. So typically 10 kV AC voltage is applied. However, if the windings you're testing um, or you're energizing are rated 480 volt, for instance, you cannot apply that. You have to be careful not to, ex to exceed the withstand of the windings. But for large transformers, 10 kV is typically applied. But then basically, if you take the windings, then the insulation, because the when you energize the windings, they are isolated from the ground. They are not connected to anything. Uh, 
that are not completely into circuit. So if everything perfect, this here should not exist. It's just a capacitor because uh, the only thing that completes the circuit is the capacitance from the what you're energizing to ground, basically. But if there is contamination, moisture, then this resistance will consume some 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 watts, which is uh, inter, you know in the form of losses. Then you go back to the definition of power factor, watts divided by voltage that you apply, current that you measure. So you're going to apply some AC voltage. Some current will flow, some of that current will go through here, some current will go through the capacitor. So obviously, the, the worse the uh, imperfection of the insulation, whether it's mo uh, there's moisture, contamination, the higher the watts will be, that means power factor will, be, will get larger. You don't want that. We want the power factor to be uh, as small as possible. Typically, for power transformers, Typically, you want that to be smaller than 0.5%. This is just to give you an idea. So, for distribution type transformers, uh, for in with mineral oil, a distribution transformer. What I mean by that, pole mount, pad mount, like where the low voltage, for instance, is less than say 600 volts or 800 volts, less than a thousand volts. Let's just make it. Very simple. Then it's going to be, it should be typically less than 1%. But if it's a ester or FR3, any biodegradable insulation, uh, typically those, they, they have a higher power factor. So then you have to refer to the manufacturer, you know, what is accepted, what is not. Mineral oil has been around for a year, so it's well understood. So there is a, the like a typical power factor is is a, is a st well established. So large transformers uh, with low voltage, for instance, two uh, k two kV all the way up, uh, you know, typically 0.5 percent is or less than 0.5 percent is a, is a lot easier to accomplish. But anyway, so the insulation <coughs> basically. Uh, you know, you, you will have some leakage, you know, or in terms of uh, watts, you know, you know, and that will cause the, that power factor kind of deviate from zero uh, because we know the insulation is not perfect. So the core is grounded. The frame also might be grounded as well. So the frame might be, so it uh, might be insulated from the, from the, so, sorry, the, the frame might be, grounded internally or it might be brought out to a bushing typically large tra tra power transformers you would have two bushings one for quarter ground and one for the frame and that's again a good practice that way if if there is an issue and i'll talk about quarter ground resistance uh, later uh, at, at a different video because then you can you can kind of determine where there is an issue. Is it the core or is it, or is it the frame, you know? But the frames, they have to be ins isolated or insulated from the tank, you know, because the frames or the core and coil. So basically this assembly here, because you have the windings, you have the core, the core are held by the frames. They, it has to be dropped inside the tank. So it, they have to be insulated from the tank because the tank is, is grounded. All right, so thank you, uh, and uh, I'll continue the discussion on, on power factor.